Hello everyone, hope you guys are having an amazing day today. Uh, this is Valida Shurf and I'm a registered pharmacist in Australia. It's been a quite while that I was thinking to make this kind of video in which I'm going to discuss uh, visa options and as well as how you can get yourself registered here in Australia. So, uh, yeah, I have been a member of this group and as well as there is another group in Facebook. The one is Australian Pharmacy Examination Group and the other one is um, CAPS group so there are so many people on those two groups who don't have much idea or what are the steps being involved in getting registered and even when I was a newbie in those groups it was also like the same situation I have got I don't have much information at the time so I thought to make this video and uh, before starting the process and step being involved I would like to mention that uh, getting visa is completely a different process which is being dealt by uh, immigration department while uh, getting your uh, registration thing done is being dealt by Australian Pharmacy Council. So, yeah. All right, so let's start it. First of all, to get yourself registered as a pharmacist, there are different steps, which I have divided into seven different steps. Step one is that you have to apply for a document evaluation process. Uh, document evaluation is uh, like you have to submit all of your documents to Australian Pharmacy Council and as well as your registration certificate which is extremely important in this and after submission uh, the Austrian Pharmacy Council is going to take eight weeks to respond you back and if they respond you back with the eligibility letter it means that all of your documents are correct and this this they find you suitable for the CAPS exam uh, so CAPS is a separate step two and CAPS is usually held three times a year depending on your location and as well as your country so uh, there are different centers of the caps available uh, like in Oman, Dubai, India, Pakistan. So it's up to you, wherever you reside, you can just book the center over there. And caps is basically a computer-based exam. It's not an online exam and there are two different papers. In each paper, you have to score 50%. So the syllabus is already mentioned on the website. I'm not going into detail of that. Uh, so. Like in my case, uh, I was not having center in Pakistan, I belong to Pakistan, so I traveled all the way to Dubai. But I think now the center is available in Pakistan as well, so you have to double check the website. So after clearing caps, you have to appear in a, a English exam. So English exam can be either IELTS or PTE. I personally give PTE, which is known as Pearson Test of English, and I found, it's, and I found it quite easy as compared to IELTS. Well, everybody has its own different opinion. So, in English exam, you have to score seven bands in each of the four modules. That is reading, writing, listening, and speaking. That's it. So, yeah, step one is document evaluation. Step two is CAPS. Step three is uh, your English exam. And now step four is that you have to apply for a provisional registration. Provisional registration means that you can start your internship hours. There are 1,824 hours, which is the legal requirement. You have to do those hours uh, before getting your full registration. So 1,824 hours is usually going to take around a year if you are working as a full-time uh, full intern pharmacist. Uh, but I think due to COVID situation, they have reduced the hours to 1,500 or something. But more or less, it might gonna take a year if you're working full-time, right? So after step four, you have to get yourself enrolled in an intern training program which is offered by PSA or GIL. So you have to do some online modules, some uh, kind of uh, assignments on that and that is the mandatory requirement. So you have to get yourself enrolled with any of these two, either PSA or GIL. So after step four, there is a step five which is uh, to appear in your written exam. The written exam requirement is that you have to complete your 40% of supervised practice hours. So the 40% of 1824 might be around 800 or 900 hours. And after clearing, I mean after attempting your written exam, you have to clear that one to get yourself enrolled in a oral exam. And for oral exam, there is a requirement of around 75% hours completion. So you can enroll yourself in an oral exam but first you have to uh, clear your written exam and as well as your 75% hours should have to be completed, right? So 
yeah this is the step six and finally after the completion of the remaining 25 percent hours you can finally apply for your registration as a pharmacist in australia so this is the whole process which you have to go through being an overseas pharmacist so i'm going to summarize it again uh, step one document evaluation step two is a caps exam step three is an english exam step four apply for provisional registration and start your internship step five is to appear in the written exam step i don't have much fingers uh, step six is uh, oral exam and then finally you have to apply for your registration as a pharmacist so this time when you're going to apply for registration it is a general registration i mean previously as i have mentioned that you have to apply for provisional registration before starting working as an intern now you have to apply for a uh, general registration general registration means that you can work as a pharmacist individually without any supervision right so yeah and now the second part which is the visa thing which i'm going to discuss now is um, as i told you in the beginning that visa is being dealt by a different organization which is the department of immigration so it has nothing to do with australian pharmacy council basically australian pharmacy council is in a body which uh, assesses your skills so each and every occupation in australia has its own uh, assessing authority like in case of industrial pharmacies we have got bitesses but in case of hospital pharmacies or a retail pharmacies or a community pharmacies we have got australian pharmacy council so there are different assessing authorities they have nothing to do with the visa thing they just give you assessment and on the basis of assessment you can claim your points so for caps you are going to get 15 points straight and the rest of the point depends on your english exam and on your age as well so uh now the visa options we have got two different types of visa categories one is sponsored by state the other one is sponsored by uh employer in case of state sponsored visa we have got uh, again two different options which is 190 and 491 so in case of 190 visa uh it is basically a permanent resident visa direct pr visa while 491 is a 5 years visa in which after 3 years you can apply for a pr so both these visas are uh, given by the state means uh, you can say like there are different states in australia and each state is having its own requirement if they think that the pharmacists uh, they need a pharmacist then they can just upload uh on their website that they are uh looking for a pharmacist and their seats are available and the visa options are available for these pharmacists so after clearing caps and english exam i mean on step 3 you are in uh, you are living in your own country so the thing is that you have to apply for a visa to come here and start your internship so uh yeah to start your internship you have to go through the websites of various state depending that the which visa is open or not i either 190 or 491 but these days the visa situation of getting sponsored by a state is quite difficult even the immigration all over uh, in australia i mean in any occupation is quite difficult but in terms of pharmacies it's the options are quite narrow and you cannot easily get a state sponsored visa i mean it depends on state to state you have to be very careful and smart you have to look the website on daily basis maybe yeah, they can open for a month or even for a week so you have to just double check the websites but i think these days the options are quite narrow new south wales uh, visa 190 is open but they require very high point i'm not sure about it so after like you have clear caps and english exam now the thing is that you don't have any state sponsored visa let's say 190 is not available or 491 is not available so what is the next step and if you are very keen to come to australia and you have uh, done hard work in caps and ielts so in this case the other option which you have got is employer sponsored visa so in case of employer sponsored visa there are the, there are again two different options one is 407 subclass and the other one is 494 subclass so in this case you need a employer who is uh, the owner of a pharmacy in australia and he is happy to sponsor you as an intern so 494 is a 5 years visa and 
after three years you can apply for a PR similarly 407 is not a five years visa 407 is just like an occupational trainee visa so you can either complete your internship on that visa and then later on you can apply for a new visa category but uh, I just want to make it very clear that being sponsored by an employer and being sponsored by state is a quite different thing state in state sponsorship you are happy I mean you are free to work anywhere in any city under any supervision under any pharmacy there is no restriction but in case of employer sponsored visa you have to work with the same employer you can't work anywhere else you can't work in any other occupation as well so let's say if it is you if you got a sponsorship from a state and when you arrive in Australia you think that you don't want to work in a pharmacy so you can work anywhere you can do any kind of job so there is no requirement but in case of uh, employer sponsored visa there is a strict requirement that you have to work with the same employer and whatever period which you have a mutual understanding and mutual commitment the employer is going to pay you the same rate and usually the employer pays the minimum wages which is determined by the government so always the state nominated option is the best option as compared to employer sponsored visas so yeah but here the question arises that not everybody have links and references with the employers here in Australia and uh, no state is not open as well so in this case what you can do is either you can contact some recruitment agencies because there are various recruitment agencies in Australia who are recruiting the pharmacists or overseas pharmacists directly from their own country to Australia they have some contacts with the employer but they might gonna charge you some extra fees which may be around three thousand or four thousand dollars I'm not sure about it so uh, yeah and now the question is that if that recruitment agency is sponsoring you directly from your own country so the employer who is looking for you I mean who is sponsoring you from your own country it, it must be having a pharmacy in a very remote or regional area because they can't find the local to work in the regional area because the regional areas are very isolated or you can say there are not much people living over there and the living facilities is not like as we have in cities like Melbourne, Sydney or Brisbane and if they can easily find I mean if they can somehow find an overseas candidate I mean the local candidate here in Australia then that candidate is going to, going to charge huge amount so that is the reason they are looking for an overseas pharmacist so that they can save the money and as well as you are also getting yourself I mean your internship thing done so that's how it works I think but you just have to make sure while coming to regional or regional uh, um, areas of Australia that they have very different kind of living situation I mean I must say that living in a regional area is completely a different thing I would say that it is not a part of Australia even so yeah I have uh, discussed all the basic points in this video and I think that uh, uh, if you need any information like uh, on any visa categories you can just google it directly as I told you that 190, 491, 494 and 407 these are the visa options these are the four basic visa options so that you can just google it uh, and you can easily get the information and uh, you have discussed all the points and if you think that uh, there is any question in your mind you can just hit the comment down and if I have information on that I will definitely gonna get back to you alright thank you so much see ya